Hello crafties, welcome to another tutorial. My name is Infinity and today we are going to be going over how to join seamlessly in the round or pretty close. So there are more than one there's more than one way to go about joining your rows in the round um, without having the seam in it. But this is how I go about it about 95% of the time. So here I have a few samples. This one came from earlier. I recorded this and it clipped me at the end. So we're here again. And this first one right here is just where I've joined with a slip stitch. Now the slip stitch, most of us when we learn or first learn, we're told to use the slip stitch and that's mainly to maintain stitch count in your rows, but it's not the only way to do that. And you can see here I have a lot of um, these ugly little holes and you can very, very immediately like see that seam. You don't want that. I don't like that. I'm going to put them to the side. Today we are going to be learning how to do this. On both of these swatches you can see, or maybe you can't see, where the seam is and I would say the only way you can see the seam on this one is because you see where my string is coming from. But otherwise, it's pretty straight, blends in really well on the right side, and I can live with that. And as well as this one, this is a sample of, per se, you were working on a hat, and you were joining and joining and joining. Your seams would be less evident. Now, both of these were worked with a 6mm. I am going to downsize to a 4.5mm just to show you the difference between tension. So without further ado, we're going to get started. Alright, so we're going to start this off with a slip knot, just like that, and I'm going to chain 15. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now what I'm going to do is just connect my chain by using a slip stitch. I really should turn that off. All right. Now what I'm going to do is chain three. So one, two, three. And I am going to proceed to work double crochets in all of my stitches around as though I were actually working up some sort of pattern. This will end up being another swatch for my wall or a box, who knows. It's 2019, I need to figure out a way to get rid of those swatches. Alright, so I've made my last stitch and what I'm going to do now is simply insert my hook in the top of that chain 3 as though I were going to make a slip stitch, but instead I'm just going to make a single crochet. So this joining method is sort of a hybrid between working in a spiral and chaining up. So with that, after we make that single crochet, we are going to chain up two, one, two, to bring it up to its proper height for the next row. And now what we're going to do is proceed to work around our project until we get back to the end of the row and we're going to close it in the same way. making my last stitch here of this row and I am going to find that top chain, insert my hook, 
and I am going to pull up a loop just like that and then I am going to create that single crochet and I'm going to chain two to bring up the height of my stitches. Now another thing, um, if you, the virtue of using a smaller hook is that the seam, the holes that the seams make becomes less evident as you might be able to see here. You can barely see that. Um, the gauge for this yarn is five millimeter. You, to use a five millimeter crochet hook or a US size H, I'm using a four and a half, which definitely makes a difference regarding those seams. So I'm gonna continue and just make this one last row. stitch. I'm going to find again that top chain and insert my hook. Pull up that loop. Make that single crochet. Now if I were going to continue up making this little pattern I'd do that but I got into a rhythm there. So to close off this project I'm just going to simply make a slip stitch and chain one so I can pull up my loop and fasten off. Okay, so now that I have my swatch completed, if you want to call it a swatch, I'm going to turn it inside out because oftentimes when you make something in the round, the inside ends up being worked on the outside and the stitches look a little fuzzier and unless that's the aesthetic for the project you're going to want to turn that on the right side so this is what i'm doing and as you can see the stitches are much silkier and as i turn my project around the seam is only noticeable because of this string right here Otherwise, to someone who doesn't do the craft, they're like, what seam? Where'd it go? But this is the only way that you would be able to tell us, the maker, that that stitch is there. I'm sorry, that seam is there. So, yeah. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful to you all today. If so, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know what kinds of tutorials you want to see in the future. Consider donating our coffee to help keep these tutorials going. And until next time, happy making.